The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. I've got a word for everyone present as well as those who watch by Ustream that God's saying this is the year of the unveiling of your significance for the voice of the world is coming against your significance the voice of the world has bombarded so regularly that people have been evangelized even without knowing that voice of the world but thus says the Spirit of the Lord you are significant you are a pearl of great price you are of, of value that is beyond anything I've demonstrated that value to you that, that God the Father, while, he, while we were yet sinners, demonstrated that love toward us by giving us his Son. That he was not only the pearl of great price, but God is saying, thus says the Lord, there's going to be a revelation and an unfolding of your personal value in the days ahead. And you're going to see that you too are the pearl of great price. That he would have sold everything for you, that if you were the only person on the face of the earth. So no longer look at just the performance, no longer look at past, past performances, no longer look at the judgments of man, including yourself, but look forward to the day ahead when God says, I'm going to unveil your personal value and I'm gonna write on the tablet of your heart with a permanency, that intrinsic value. In Jesus' name, for um, those that feel like they're partnering with us on Ustream, um, we just thank you for your donations. When times have, times past, things have been accomplished because of some Ustream people. Even when they said Ustream people have the nature of the beast of Ustream is everything's free. But that we found, we've proven that wrong. There's people that are knit by the Spirit, knit with our hearts. And when we had expenses here, it wasn't the church that paid for it. It was people that watched on Ustream that felt knit with us. I'm still very, very much indebted to that heart attitude. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the, for the tithes and the offerings that are received. We thank you for those that have partnered with us financially, that we've been able to accomplish a great deal for a tiny ministry. We've been able to accomplish and touch many lives and continue to do so. And so, Father, we pray, too, that even with the latest book that's come out, we, we pray that you would add a blessing. Uh, it's, it's interesting. We've had people from Italy recently that just been contacted uh, through the materials that we spread, South Africa, Germany, uh, South Korea. These are people that would never, ever, probably ever see the, uh, uh, come in here personally, but their lives have been changed. Changed lives is what it's all about. I wouldn't want to do ministry that I, if I didn't see changed lives. It would be, it would be very disheartening. Um, but either saved or grow. And either one just thrills me to see those changed lives. Without changed lives, there's not much to it. So, Father, we just thank you that you who began a good work are going to continue that good work. And there's going to be that the full stature approach is going to go forward and challenge even the most mature saints to increase the lordship of Jesus in their lives. Incrementally, but nonetheless, noticeable change of increase. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, Jason's going to be sharing the message this morning. So the, maybe that's why the prophetic rose up that we had to. Jennifer just and I just need to say our peace. Right? Who did not get a prophetic word? Anybody? Yes, you did. I said, everybody in the room. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, open your heart to that now. I am significant. And this is going to be a year of significance because it's going to be God's appraisal and not man's. Big difference. Who would you rather have give you as a recommendation if you went for a job? Would you like God the Father to sign it or someone else? Wow. Go get a job and say, God is my Father. And he says, I am, he, he highly recommends me. He's not ashamed of me. I'm going to put that on the next one. I don't know if that gets you a job, though. I could. <laughs> so, Father, we just thank you. Let's just pray for Jason as he comes up. Um, he who began a good work will continue that good work. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. Um, I wanted before I get into my, uh, what I had prepared, I, I wanted to say that um, I was getting throughout the the worship service. It's an old song. Um, um, the horse and the rider are thrown into the sea. Um, and I really feel like what the Lord was speaking to me about about uh, this year uh, is that we've had a lot of a lot of us here and a lot of us on the Ustream or whoever's watching. There's, there's times in our lives where the enemy just is a constant nagging, nipping at your heels, whether it's in finances, whether it's in, you know, whatever. And it's been ongoing. And I really feel that the Lord is speaking that this year is going to be a year of breakthrough, that this year he's going to take care of that so that we can move forward through that open door that we've been hearing about for the last, you know, three or four years. Um, a lot of us have been seeing, you know, when we went, we actually opened door. that open door, it was like a, a, a sheetrock in front of us. And that's a lie. And this year, without that constant nagging of the, the enemy on our heels, we're going to be able to break through that. And we're going to see a lot of breakthrough this year. That's all. Anyway, <laughs> I wanted to pitch in with the prophetic there as well. I didn't want to feel left out, but um, we've been we've been discussing um, since the beginning of the year. They've been talking about the peace challenge that's been going on, and uh, I don't know how many of, of of you guys are actually, you know, writing down your stuff at the end of the night and and everything, and how well you walked in peace during the day. Uh, it's it really is a little disappointing sometimes when you sit down and. Oh, I really didn't stay in peace during this situation. Um, recently, uh, went car shopping because our, our family's growing and I, need, I needed a bigger vehicle. And, and, and that alone, sh shopping for a house, shopping for a car is, is stress enough to, to push you out of your peace. <laughs> but um, that wasn't as hard and, and difficult as I thought it would be. But the DMV was pretty tough. Uh, I wanted to get, you know, I, I'm now in, in North Carolina. I was in South Carolina, so I went to get my car registered, and I got, you know, waited an hour to get in to the person to talk to, and then they were like, "Well, I, you need a North Carolina license or, you know, license in order to get her car registered." I was like, "Okay." So I drive to the other place, and and uh, I don't remember. There, there. I actually got there three times because. I think the first time I got all the way to the front and I needed something that they I didn't have. And not only did I didn't have it, it, it wasn't something I could have. So uh, I was like, what are you asking me for? The, the, I don't have the title, the bank owns the title. How am I supposed to show you the title to get my, <laughs> I'm like going off, like, where's my piece? <laughs> but, and then, and, and then and like the second day I went and the computers were down. And so I waited in line for hours and didn't, yeah. so I left. The third time I came in, what was the third time? The third time I went, the first time was a driver's license. I had to go home and go to the other place. The second time was, there was like, I don't know how many times, but when I finally got to the place where I can actually get my title, because I got my driver's license and then I got all that stuff squared away, um, it was a three and a half hour wait and, and at least an hour and a half outside because they didn't want us blocking the doorway because it was a you know fire hazard, whatever. So this whole time, I got a lot of practice. <laughs> Many hours <laughs> just in the DMV alone. And um, I tell you what though, if anybody has ever gone to uh, what, what we experienced yesterday, we had a five hour birthing class about childbirth and to, to prayer, you know, open your eyes to what's actually going to happen, and um, and and that that was good. I was able to, to keep my peace through most of it until everybody started going around the room and telling their stories, and and it just sounded. I was like, oh my God, this happened. And then they just started breaking down and crying, and you know, I the the doctor did this and he left me there and I didn't have the right medication, and I'm like, oh my God, this really happens. 
the things that rip and tear that I don't even want to know. <laughs> you know, staples and... <laughs> so, yeah, I had a lot of, a lot of practice yesterday. The, the thing was, is like, it's like after, all, after everybody got their turn, it was like, you know, to, they got to, to, to Gwen and I, and then we, we did our thing, and then we went on. But by the time everybody was done, and we, I was completely horrified <laughs> by everybody's stories, She's like, let's, you know, in this, in this 50 page book, let's skip to page 23. Every single thing that you could imagine that could go wrong, you know, number one. <laughs> I was like, well, we skipped all the good stuff. <laughs> we went, every single thing that could go wrong in a pregnancy, in a birth. And you're, I was like, okay, after hearing everybody's horror stories, let's just get it black and white, you know, in your face. So anyhow, it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I'm I'm making it out a little bit worse than it was, but it it, it was it was really good to know and good you know all of it. Um, anything I could get a hold of as far as information before everything happens, because this will be my first child. But um, so everything I I, you know, I could pick up as much facts and and stuff as as I could, and and so a lot of it was stuff I already knew, and. Um, prepared myself so but just like I said you know we we go through things every week um, this, this this last few weeks have been really challenging since the beginning of the year uh, the peace challenge has been something and I'm not I'm not I'm not that bad <laughs> I th you know I went into it thinking I'm not that bad I, I usually have peace most of the time and and just like you know, just like my dad, we we have a we have a um, a special kind of discernment thing that I just kind of grew up with. It was just like a God-given gift. So I I know how to drop drop down, so to speak, and into my spirit and touch God where He is. You know, ninety percent of the time. So it's just it comes natural for us. It comes natural for me. We all have the tools that we can do it, though. So that's what we teach here, so that you guys can do that, too. But what my, my message is, basically, it's not a salvation message, it's, um, but it is kind of um, basic. I wanted to get back to a certain part of our Christian walk where we could actually um, say that, yes, we, we are saved, and this is why, and this is, this is why we have value to God. Um, in general, if you do not get your value from God, you are going to look for other people to tell you what you're worth. And, and you really don't want to do that. The, 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 you know, all the different things that you go through in life cannot determine who you are and what your value is. If, you, if it is, you're, you're going to give up. There's, there's... So this is, this is what I wanted to, to talk about. Um, what is value? Value this is one thing that you're going to want to listen to or you want to write down in your notes. Value is always determined by the perception of the purchaser. Now, we run through things that are, you know, everywhere. Everything has value. We go to the store, everything has price tags on it. Um, it's all determined by the purchaser's point of perspective. Um, if something is of high value and we have it, we can get it at a low cost then we think we got a deal. And those are the things that we run after. The things that we have, that, that we value the most is what we pursue. Um, when I was, I wanna say 17, 18, I got my first car. And it was with the money I got for, for you know, I, well, no, it must have been 18, because I, I got the money for my high school graduation party. And I, and I spent it on a, on a new car, and it was like, well, to me, it was awesome. Um, my dad actually helped me pick it out when I was, I don't even remember where I was, but he helped me get it. For, and it was a Plymouth Turismo. And I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that car before, but there might have, there's probably only six of them available in the, <laughs> in the world at the time. Uh, it had like a, a lawnmower engine for horsepower and um, but <laughs> this, 
Jennifer knows some of the stories that I had with it. My first, one of my first, well, it had to been my first winter with it. Um, I was coming back from Walmart and I was turning, I was coming down the highway and I, I turned onto the uh, side street going towards my house and the door swung open because it was so cold that the, the latch didn't shut and it, it just swung open. And I, I didn't have my drive, my seat belt on because it was just like right around the corner from where I lived and I didn't think at the time. And I went to grab the door and I rolled right out of the car. <laughs> and I, I proceeded to roll head over heels down, a, down, a, down the, the drive and in, into a ditch. Uh, it was full of snow. And of course, I ended up laying, laying you know, straight up in the air, looking up and laughing hysterically, um, not even thinking, oh my god, my car. And my car, it just kind of kept going. And it, and it eventually, it kind of pooped out in the back of, a, of this uh, restaurant called Jess's Restaurant. And it just kind of parked itself with the door open. <laughs> but, but since then, at that point, I was like, oh, I got the, I got the greatest idea. I got I to gotta tie these, these doors shut because this isn't, this isn't cool at all. I don't, wanna, I don't want these doors to fly open when I turn the corner all the time. And so I, I, I got the great idea of putting bungee cords across the door handles. <laughs> I wrapped them real, real tight. And, of course, they went across my, my chest and, and lap. Um, but I didn't find out that that was a really bad idea until after I did a few turns at a high speed and the door would, would swing open real fast and it would like catch all my skin and hair between the bungee and then it would snap shut real quick, boom! And then, it, and then the other door would sli slide open and it would slam shut. It was like the crate, the, I don't recommend, I don't recommend that. But I was, you know, I was 17, I wasn't that, wasn't that bright on the things of the way that world the world works, I guess. Uh, but it is a, it was a crazy. The thing is, is how awful that car was, and how how much um, how many different things went wrong with it. <laughs> I mean, at one point I was driving down the highway, and I I went to turn off an exit, and the, the steering wheel just kept turning, and my car kept going straight. <laughs> And I was a nice sunny, dry day, <laughs> and, the, and I just heard clunk, and I went zzz, and the wheel was spin, and eventually it caught on again, and I was able to get home and get the, I think it was the rack and pinion, fixed. But um, the thing is, is that car had massive value to me, because it was freedom, for me. It was I, I can go and do whatever I wanted. I can get away from the house, I can go see my friends, I could go to the movies, I could, you know, I had freedom to get somewhere, whether, you know, wherever it was, and on, on my own. So it was kind of a pride, you know, booster, you know, I got, a, I got a vehicle, I can get somewhere on my own, I can help somebody if they needed a ride. Um, but if you brought that car to anywhere and said, what's the value, you know, you're going to get it. Three or four hundred dollars for it, maybe just for the metal, you know. Um, so it is. It's the, the the value of something is determined by the perception of the purchaser. So if I hold that car in in high value, I wouldn't have been able to sell it for. And in fact, I think I sold it for like three hundred dollars to somebody that junked it, more than likely. Um, but at that time, that was all. That was it was awesome, and I and I, I ran the miles up to sky high, and it was. Um, but you see how the difference is that it depends on who, the purchaser. The, it depends on the person that, you know. So we can't really say, from, you know, what am I worth, and ask anybody here. They all come up with different things, even scientifically. If we broke down our an, a regular adult-sized body into different elements, we'd only get about 17 bucks worth of stuff. So, I mean, if you want to do it scientifically, fine. If you want to do it, like, um, it used to be 97 cents, by the way. It, it's gone up a little, 17 bucks. Um, but, it, I mean, if you were, like, in the surgery, uh, I don't even know, if you're in the medical field and you knew exactly what all your organs and things were, were worth, we can get up to $46 million for a person's body. 
depending on all the fluids and all the stuff that you can't recreate scientifically or in the, you know in the in the you can actually get up to 46 million dollars is what i read that's pretty crazy i mean a pancreas is like forty three thousand dollars right there but i mean it's not something that you want to give up <laughs> however what I thought was interesting is that the female eggs are, are worth like seven seven thousand dollars a crack. I I don't if you can find a buyer, I don't know. It might be worth it. Anyway, not not for me. Um but see those those are those are basically just things. Like you, you, you see things at the store and you and you and things that you want and things that you need and things and you put all types of different values on each based on what you would like and what you you know um, what you would actually chase after or pursue um, in society we're worth very our, our worth varies greatly um, it's based on people's opinion based on skin race whatever um, we even I mean you get to a certain point and in a more serious note it's like human value becomes it's a, it's a it's a big high and low there and we have abortion, which is we, we devalued baby, unborn babies to nothing then. It's an inconvenience, maybe. And then they choose abortion. And it's the same with marriage. We, throw away, we can throw away our marriages at some point just because it's an inconvenience. If it's an inconvenience, you, you greatly devalued what, what God put together. Um, so that, those things... They, they wane up and down. Society gives us all kinds of, of stuff. And if we always look to society and through the media and things about and try to get our self-worth from, from those things, we're screwed. I mean, really. So um, then the, there's so many people that are struggle with, with depression um, that have been wounded by the things that society, things that people have done to them. Um, they feel unloved or um, unwanted, even unnecessary in this life. And that's, that's just, that's, it's horrible, right? Um, that's because they've seen their self-worth through others' eyes. And, and, that, and then they, they take it in. Um, because the, pe the world around you is very visible, very in your face. Um, and people can be very convincing. So, um, there's, there's times, though, however, in all of our lives, Christian believers we, we even that we feel beat down um, discouraged even filled with doubt on how God could even love us and how God's you know feels worthy of or, you know has worth for us um, Satan likes to attack us making us think that we have no self-worth and that there's you know God doesn't value us at all there are other times when Christians need reminders of how God sees all of us with tremendous value as we are sharing the gospel of loving and serving others even when it's hard to love and serve those people. Um, but our value to God is, is incredible. And the scriptures, there's, all, there's a bunch of scriptures, and I'll read through a few, that pertain to the value that he has set on us. God is the one who set the standard for value. Jesus' standard for our value is the only true standard. Okay? It's the only true standard. In Matthew 16, 26, Jesus says, What profit is it a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? It's very costly. It's, that's, a, that's a redundant question. It doesn't need response to. God places value on us that's far beyond all of the wealth in the world. That's whatever the world put all together, everything in value of the world, it, it ends up, adds up to be close to like $36 trillion worth. That, that means like every million dollar mat, mansion, every piece of gold. It's like give or take 36, 37,000, 36 or 37 trillion dollars if you wanted to put it in US dollars. But his value on each and every individual on earth far exceeds that. The, we are of utmost value to him. 
his thoughts towards us are innumerable. They are, the, the scripture says, in, and I think David says it in the Psalms, that his thoughts towards us are like the grains of sand in all of the earth. It doesn't mean just here in that bottle or, you know, here on that shoreline. It's all of the earth. His thoughts are continually, continuously towards us. His intimate thoughts of each of us towards us intimately. He values us. Would you not? I mean, I value my wife. As far as I could tell, immeasurably. But I don't think I could fill a jar of sand full of thoughts that I, you know, I can't even think that much. <laughs> Let alone, I would want to, and I think it's immeasurable that I, that, you know, but no man can do that. It's, but God can. And that's how, how awesome we are in his sight. He gave everything for each and every one of us, even when we were decrepit and, and abusive and hateful towards him. He gave us everything. That is a high cost. That was a high price tag that he, he gave all of us. And he pursued us because he felt that we were of value. The Bible has actually many passages that tell us what God has to say about worth and our value in his eyes. Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says, <clears throat> We were made in his image, the very image of God. Psalm 139, 13 through 16 says that we were fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's just, that's an awesome scripture. All the days of our lives are written in God's book before we were ever born, confirming God's prior knowledge and plan for our lives. Ephesians 1, 4 says, God chose his children before the foundations of the earth were ever formed. And Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, we're told we're God's, his own possession, chosen for the praise of his glory, that we have an inheritance in heaven with him as his children. But if you look at all of these few scriptures that I quoted, the words in the, in the above phrases are, are made, we are made, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We, it were, we were written on his hand. God chose his children. We are his own possession. We have an inheritance. All these phrases have one thing in common. They're not things we did for ourselves. We're not all, we're not responsible for any of that. All those things he either did to us or for us, and that's where we get our value. We have to understand that we are of utmost value to God before we can express properly the value of others. Huh? We have to know it in ourselves. There was, there was something that somebody wrote on, on, on my Facebook page that I had to delete, unfortunately, um, that he basically said, we got to stop looking inward and, and, and look outward and, you know, stop working on ourselves all the time and, you know, help the people that are out there. Okay, well, I don't want somebody with a log in their eye helping me with a splinter in mine. It just doesn't make sense. Anyway, that was my... None of those things were things that we did for ourselves, nor have we earned or deserved anything. Thank God we don't get what we deserve. Sometimes we, we, we get things that we want or that we feel is, are right, and we have justice happen, and it's good. But for the most part, God has saved us from a lot, a lot of pain and agony, more so than we were ever gone through in our lives. We're merely recipients of all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. 
That's Ephesians 1, 3. Therefore, we can conclude that our worth is not really of the self at all. Rather, it is worth given to us by God. We are of in, invaluable worth to him because of the price he paid to make us worthy. The death of his son on the cross is what happened. In Jesus' hierarchy of value, people held a higher place than the rest of creation. He talked about the birds of the, the, the field and, and how um, even the sparrows have food that the Father feeds. How much more important are we? And we can't forget that when we're going through stuff that makes it look like God isn't there. We have to know intrinsic. It's like we, we need to take some of those scriptures and meditate on them and get them in. Because until you believe who you are, who God says you are to him, you're not going to be open to receive from him. You know, things can fall in your lap accidentally, and that's great. But why not have the ability and the stance to be able to, to be ready for what God has to give and pour out? My, my last point is, and I hit it on a little bit before, but we have nothing, we have done nothing to deserve such worth and value that God has placed on us. I must place my self-worth in God's truth. I am his royal priesthood, his special treasure, his future bride, his workmanship. And it's all because I chose to accept his love and forgiveness the fact gives me, that fact gives me great value and worth in his sight. My worth in God is not based on my performance. It's based on his performance. We can't do anything in order to get more or less value from him. He loved me so much that he died to redeem me and he paid the price a high priced purchase me and put me into the bride of Christ. That is all of you. He prayed a high price so that you could be here today listening to this basic message of value and salvation. We are his prized possessions, his sought out jewels, the living stones who make up the tabernacle he desires to dwell in. Why would God feel this way towards us? What have we done to deserve such love? This is the greatest truth of all. We have done nothing to merit his love and, and his pursuit. For when we were still decrepit, lost sinners, enemies of God, he sought us out. Remember, we pursue what we value. He does the same. He pursued us because we are of high value. He saw us in what only his love could see through his grace. He saw treasures in the midst of corruption and sin. He purchased as precious what many would consider worthless. Have you ever felt worthless in your life? There's times you felt kicked to the curb. You felt no good. Nothing's right. He saw beyond our state and saw what only his grace could produce. We know through, through this ministry, there's a, there's a, through the, the, the dropping down and, and really connecting with, with God's presence. Um, there's, a, there's a series, uh, well, he's, he's going through a series on Sid's um, TV show right now. It's Intimate Prayer. There's, there's a portion of, of, of that where it's called absorbing. And, and the thing is, is, when we do 
when God gives us a precious truth or a nugget or anything, nothing is insignificant. And there's so many facets and so much depth in some of the most basic elemental things. I mean, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he, we all know this scripture, but have you meditated on it? Have you really received it as truth for you, for what God is speaking to your spirit? He so loved the world. If you would close your eyes and just connect with him in the spirit, that he gave his only son for you because you are of high value. He pursued you. I just wanted to, to give this, this, this is relatively short message, because it's, it's an uplifting, encouraging thing. We, we need... We need to know the truth about ourselves and our worth before we can actually move on to some of the heavier things. It's like we got to kind of backtrack every once in a while and say, you know, wow, this, this peace stuff is so difficult. Um, you know, but then you get back to the basics and say, but my value is great in the eyes of God. So it gives you that hope and that strength to carry on, so to speak. But yeah, sometimes I believe we need to go back to some of the basics. We need to, to not just take a, a, a verse of scripture and memorize it, but we needed to get it, we need to chew on it. And we needed to get it down in our spirits and believe. Because everything in the God's word, everything in the Bible is truth. And we need to believe that truth. Um, a few of the scriptures that I came across that I that I wanted to read was um, Psalms 139, 13, and 14. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. See, David knew how God thought, and he knew the way to God's heart. It, 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 the scripture says he was a, he was a man after God's own heart. No matter his shortcomings or, or greatest achievements, he was a man after God's own heart. And he knew that, that God made him fearfully and wonderfully, and that all his works were good. And it's, you know, even when, when, when God created the universe and, the, and, and everything, he called it all good. It's all good. And inherently, I mean, before we met salvation, before before Jesus died for us, we were lost. We we had we were no we were no good. <laughs> but the Lord saw that even from the beginning that we were good and continued, no matter what we look like, to pursue us. And give us Christ and die for us so that we would have life in the way that it should be. So anytime we think about ourselves as anything less than God's chosen people, his royal priesthood, we're, we're, we're taking the power away from what he did for us. Can a woman forget her nursing child and that she should have no compassion on her son of her womb? But yes, even these can be forgotten, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands, and your walls are continually before me. That's Isaiah forty nine fifteen. And I think if you just took that scripture and chewed on it and took it apart, and not just thinking, but feeling even. And that's that's a touchy subject. People don't like to feel all the time. But if you felt like, Lord, Holy Spirit, teach me how you feel when, when you wrote these scriptures. You'll get it. He predestined us for the adoption of sons to Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. 
It was all his doing. We didn't do anything for it. We can't do anything to get more. We just have to receive it. We just have to know how to receive it. That was it. If uh, Jason stay up here and uh, same with Jennifer, I want to pray. We've got a nice small group. That's not nice. I'd like to have a big group, but we have a nice small group. We can we can literally lay hands on everybody. I believe in that there's impartation, but I also believe it's dependent upon your receptivity. And I believe if if it, if the word that heaven opened and came upon Jesus, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. If Jesus received that, how much more should we receive the same thing, sons and daughters? And if God would write something internal on the tablet of our heart this morning, no matter what measure you partake of the divine nature, it's more than you had when you came in. Agree? You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com.